Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Sunday the 15th of November. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender, Senior Pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Thank you for joining me today for prayer. As we share together in this wonderful gift that God's given us, let's bow our heads, shall we, and remember that whenever we gather in his name, he is with us. So let's bow our heads and be still for a moment. Psalm 144 Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my rock and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues the peoples under me. O Lord, what are human beings that you regard them, or mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath, their days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Make the lightning flash and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Set me free and rescue me from the mighty waters. From the hands of aliens whose mouths speak lies and whose right hands are false. I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon a ten-stringed harp I will play to you, the one who gives victories to kings, the one who rescues his servant David. Rescue me from the cruel sword, and deliver me from the hand of aliens whose mouths speak lies and whose right hands are false. May our sons in their youth be like plants full grown, our daughters like corner pillars cut for the building of a palace. May our barns be filled with produce of every kind. May our sheep increase by thousands, by ten of thousands in our fields. And may our cattle be heavy with young. May there be no breach in the walls, no exile, and no cry of distress in our streets. Happy are the people to whom such blessings fall. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. We thank God for his word. Let's pray. In this time when we are unable to sing collectively hymns of praise, I'm going to read as a prayer this morning. The words of George Herbert set variously set to music. Let all the world in every corner sing, my God and King. The heavens are not too high, his praise may thither fly. The earth is not too low, his praises there may grow. Let all the world in every corner sing, my God and King. Let all the world in every corner sing my God and King. The church with psalms must shout. No door can keep them out. But above all, the heart must bear the longest part. Let all the world in every corner sing my God and King. Let's pray. Lord our God, great, eternal, wonderful in glory, who keepest covenant and promises for those that love thee with their whole heart, who are the life of all, the help of those that flee to thee, the hope of those who cry unto thee. Cleanse us from our sins, secret and open and from every thought displeasing to thy goodness. Cleanse our bodies and souls, our hearts and consciences, that with a pure heart and a clean soul, with perfect love and calm hope, we may venture confidently 
and fearlessly to pray unto thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May Almighty God forgive you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, give you time to amend your life, and bring you the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're reading through the book of the prophet Micah at the moment. And today we read from chapter 5, from verse 1 to 6. Now you are walled around with a wall of siege. A siege is laid against us. With a rod they strike the ruler of Israel upon the cheek. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the least clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise up against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. They shall rule the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod with the drawn sword. They shall rescue us from the Assyrians if they come into our land or tread within our border. Thanks be to God for his word. A familiar passage. At least some of those verses are familiar to us, particularly as we go into Advent and Christmas time. We'll hear those as they speak of the coming of Jesus to be the one who's born in Bethlehem, the one who will come to rule over his people. Here in Micah, the original context is that in, in the midst of rulers who are faithless, who are corrupt, uh, Micah is peering, as it were, into the distance. One could imagine him using sort of spiritual binoculars at this point. And he's looking ahead 700 years to contemplate the birth of Jesus. The perfect ruler. You know, there are always faithless. There are always imperfect and corrupt rulers. Micah has known that and is looking around himself and seeing uh, the devastation that rulers who look after only their own interests bring upon their people. But Micah declares that this Messiah King will gently shepherd his people. He'll nurture them. He'll look after them, not just in the immediate time, but forever, to give hope for the future. And in the midst of a fractured and anxiety-ridden world, such as Micah is living in, he wants to offer his people hope. You know, that's so important for you and me. We may despair sometimes at the state of our world. We may despair at what's happening in our communities and in our nation but we rejoice in the fact that there is an everlasting hope that's focused not in human leaders who will come and go and fail and fade but in this shepherd king who is promised here in verse 5 to be the one of peace he will be their peace in him, in his character, in his judgments, in his life, our peace. And there are echoes here of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 2, who talks about the fact that Jesus will be our peace, who has broken down 
walls of enmity or division. Things that divide people are broken down by the coming of Jesus. Wouldn't it be great in these days if we made it a, a, a hopeful aim for ourselves, for our families, for our communities to see anything that divides broken down so that the Prince of Peace might exercise rule and loving authority. Let's confess our faith together. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together. O merciful God, fill our hearts, we pray, with the graces of your Holy Spirit, with love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, humility and self-control. Teach us to love those who hate us, to pray for those who despitefully use us, that we may be the children of your love, our Father, who makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. In adversity grant us grace to be patient, in prosperity keep us humble. May we guard the doors of our lips, may we lightly esteem the pleasures of this world, and thirst for ever after heavenly things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today we join in praying for the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. And throughout the world, Open Doors is partnering with Christianity, so Christian Solidarity Worldwide, Release International, the Evangelical Alliance and other organisations. There's an online event which is being broadcast later in the day. We pray that this may reach new audiences and provide much needed support for the persecuted family of God around the world. We pray that God would heal and remove any deeply entrenched opposition to freedom of religious expression and that the church would be spurred on in their faith as they seek to be faithful witnesses to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we pray for ourselves and for those we know and love in a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may the God of peace Make you perfect and holy, and may you be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love, with God's people everywhere, today and forevermore. Amen.
thank you for joining me today god bless you throughout the day there's various events that you can access online through our uh, church uh, youtube channel through instagram tv through facebook here uh, at 9 30 there's kids church at 10 30 there's a service focusing on the work of christians against poverty and of course as i mentioned previously if you go to the page of open doors for the persecuted church or if you just type into your search bar a day of prayer for the persecuted church you'll find a link to this wonderful gathering of prayer that there will be a pouring of love for those around the world who are persecuted because of their faith but until we meet again to pray like this goodbye and god bless